In other words, we're getting rid of the bad guy senescent cells and leaving behind the good guy ones. Now, in the cases of cancer, we've got to get rid of all of them. So the other thing we've had to do is find agents where we can take non-damaging senescent cells and turn them into damaging senescent cells so that we can use senolytics to kill them. Before we deep into senolytics, can you uh, just explain what are they for our audience? What, what are senolytics? And, uh, and I know that... Uh, uh, you actually the first uh, person to discuss it in uh, your 2015 Aging Cells uh, paper. So maybe discuss that, how you got into this idea and what are Synolytics? Well, we began working on it in, uh, when uh, Tamara and I were, uh, Chikonia, Dr. Chikonia and I were still in Boston uh, in 2004 because Ned Sharpless, who later became head of the FDA for a while, and then head of the National Cancer Institute, and he just retired from that position. He published a very important paper in 2004 um, showing that there's um, an association between decreases in senescent cell numbers, these cells that don't divide, in animals that have mild caloric restriction, which prolongs health span, or animals with certain changes in their um, growth hormone Ig insulin-like growth factor one system that can prolong health span. So he noticed that those animals that live longer had a lower senescent cell burden. So he found an association. And based on that, Tamara and I asked, is there cause and effect? If we get rid of senescent cells, could we actually have an impact on health span and age-related diseases? So we started working um, uh, using antibodies. These are molecules that would bind to a senescent cell and putting a toxic cargo on to see if we could kill them. Didn't get very far with that. We tried high throughput screens, had a few hits, but didn't get very far with it. And then after we moved to Mayo and worked with Izu, who's in our lab still, it hit us in, uh, in 2013 that some senescent cells, despite the fact they're killing cells around them, don't themselves die. Yeah, the question was, uh, what, what are, if you can just define what are senolytics, what, what, what are they doing, and the, how do they uh, attack uh, the senescent cells? Yeah, um, the cells we were trying to kill are the ones that produce factors that uh, damage other cells around them. So some senescent cells don't produce factors that kill cells around them. Uh, anywhere from 30 to 50 percent don't. So they produce growth factors and other things like that. But then there's another around 50 percent of senescent cells that produce factors that kill cells around them, yet they themselves don't divide. So we asked why, despite the fact these cells are releasing factors that kill things around them, why don't the senescent cells die? So we look for things that we call senescent cell anti-apatotic pathways or SCAPs. There, we asked, are there pathways that senescent cells use to defend themselves from the things that senescent cells are using to kill cells around them? And um, we discovered that there are at least five pathways. Now we know that there are 10. Um, and that if we transiently disable those pathways through which senescent cells prevent themselves from um, self-destruction, that we could... Um, uh, allow senescent cells to kill themselves instead of the cells around them. So uh, this is basically how senolytics work. They don't kill every senescent cell. They only kill the senescent cells that are doing damage. They only kill the ones that are producing factors that are, that are damaging cells around them by taking away their ability, the senescent cells' ability to resist those factors. So it's very different from uh, the kinds of animal models where you base removing senescent cells on certain factors that those animal models express within senescent cells. So, um, in other words, we're getting rid of the bad guy senescent cells and leaving behind the good guy ones. Now, in the cases of cancer, we've got to get rid of all of them. So the other thing we've had to do is find agents where we can take non-damaging uh, senescent cells and turn them into damaging senescent cells so that we can use senolytics to kill them. So those are called senosensitizers, and that's a new class of drugs we're developing. Wow. Are there um, a, like a place or a category of certain types of diseases or um, tissues that produce more of these types of senolytic or senescent cells? 
the ones that are resistant to kind of killing themselves or, it, it, you know, that 30 to 50 percent, they can be kind of wherever all over the place. It's really any tissue with the right uh, stimuli. So, and it can be non-dividing cells can become senescent too and produce uh, damaging factors. Um, it typically takes cells a week to six weeks to become senescent, although there are some circumstances where they can become senescent very quickly. Like iron, for example, can make a cell become senescent within a day or two. But things like radiation or uh, chemotherapy or other things that can cause a cell to become senescent, um, you know, damage related to cancers and so forth, or infections and so forth. Normally, it takes a week to six weeks for a cell to become fully senescent and to produce bad things. So, and these cells don't divide. And that means if we're getting rid of them, we can get rid of them with intermittent treatments. It's unlike other kinds of conditions where cells are constantly producing things. If we can remove these cells every once in a while, um, instead of continuously, we get the same benefit, if not more, by doing that than giving drugs continuously. So one of the things we did was to develop drugs that would um, uh, take away protection of senescent cells, that senescent cells use to protect themselves from the things that they're killing cells around them. So the way senolytics work is by transiently disabling the, the defenses that senescent cells use to, to stop them from killing themselves instead of cells around them. And um, a very brief exposure to a senescent cell is sufficient to allow that senescent cell to begin an irreversible process of cell death, which takes 18 hours. So it only takes a few minutes of exposure of a senescent cell to a senolytic to um, activate that program and get rid of uh, senescent cells. So these, given that it takes a week to six weeks for new senescent cells to form, it means senolytics can be given in most circumstances once a week, once every two weeks, once a month. In some cases, say after radiation, if, if there's radiation like um, to a hind limb, for example, in mice, that causes senescence and they have trouble walking. We only have to give it once in the mouse's lifetime because there's no future radiation. We just have to give it once. And that mouse is able to walk again for the remainder of its life, the same way as a mouse that has not um, had um, radiation. So the frequency of administering these drugs will depend very much on the disease state um, and how um, senescence is being induced to occur.